Hey everyone, welcome to my vlog. So today is going to be a pretty cool vlog. We're gonna talk about knowing when to sharpen your blades by sight. Not by hours, not by lawn count, but by sight. We're gonna do some TB360 mowing today. We're gonna to rip through some yards. We're gonna work on our tan, don't worry. We got a privacy fence. We're gonna talk about how to handle customers that have a death in the family. What is the right thing to do? How do you conduct yourself accordingly? And we got a St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital donation update. I'm at Circle K with uh, old boy grabbing himself some energy drinks. Didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Um, so I uh, just sent him on his way <clears throat> to get some drinks for himself and uh, energy shot or some some crap like that. I don't have any of that. I just. I'll just drink me some coffee, but today we got, um, today's Thursday, so we got to do Wednesday's work today, which is a good financial day, but a small lawn day. It's only like nine lawns, uh, but it's a pretty good financial day because a couple of them lawns are really big payers, um, so that makes things really nice, and, but then we're also going to add some of Thursday's work um, into today and some of Friday's work into today. So we're just gonna go up north and we're gonna sweep. It's Thursday, so we're gonna do yesterday, today, and tomorrow's cooler yards that I would normally do on a Wednesday and on a Friday. So I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna start sweeping down and make my way down. So tomorrow, what's gonna be left will be probably about 12 or 13 yards closer to my home to close out the week. And then what will be left for Saturday will be five um, really good paying lawns that I send old boy out to do every other Saturday. He goes and does those yards. Um, three of them are in my neighborhood and two of them are across the street from each other. So it's very efficient for him. So that's the plan. That's that's setting the, uh, the table. Now, I think I have a sty in my eye. You see, it's really gross looking. But I think, I don't know if it's under my eyelid or not. I looked last night, I couldn't find anything in my eye. I flipped my eyelid over. I mean, I didn't see anything. I might just have like busted blood vessel maybe that's causing it, but it feels really weird right on my eyelid, but there's nothing there. So it must be my eye itself. And it, maybe I broke a blood vessel or something in my eye. I don't know, but it feels really weird. It looks like death. This, I think this way my eye looks fine, but this side it's like really, really bad, so I don't know, it's freaky looking. All right guys, so we are three lawns deep into, I think it's gonna be a 13 lawn day. So you guys might notice um, that my lawn totals changed as the day goes on. Um, <laughs> sometimes I'll say we got 12 to do and I end up doing 15, or I'll say I got 15 to do and we end up doing 13. It's pretty fluid. My business is kind of fluid. So sometimes I'm right by the book, you know, what I print out for today is, is what I do. And sometimes I print out what's due today, but I know in the back of my mind, I got this guy who's a once a whileer and I didn't put him on the list or, so my math might be off a little bit and as the day goes on, you know, everything changes. For instance, yesterday I said, we had 11 done and five to do, five left to go. Uh, but then we turned around and, and ended up doing 17 lawns. Um, and that was after the new one got added in with the 11 to go. That's because I forgot to remember one in the neighborhood across the street that we had to get. So um, things kind of things kind of change in my mind's 100 miles an hour. But right now I want to show you guys uh, just a quick little lesson if I can. And hopefully this will show. But I want to show you guys a little something about sharpening blades. And how you know when to sharpen blades. A lot of people will go by hours. Um, they'll just go by the yard. They'll go once a week. They'll go twice a week. Um, they'll sharpen every day. Or they'll sharpen only when their mower won't perform anymore. Well, there's a surefire way to know when it's time to sharpen your blades. And I can tell you right now, it's time for me to sharpen my blades. Or replace them. So let's look at this lawn, look at the cut quality that the blade's producing, and it's terrible. If you look right here, I'll put my finger as a backdrop maybe, you see how the grass is torn? 
instead of cut, it's tearing the grass. You see it's split? And you see the little fibers of lawn, of grass? Um, when you start seeing that, here's, here's one. See that right there? See how it's all torn? Hopefully that focuses for you. I'll back it up a little bit too. When you're tearing the grass instead of cutting the grass, it's time to sharpen your blades. So you gotta look at stuff like that. Here's another piece right here. This is just freshly cut. I just mowed this lawn and see how it's all torn? You see that? How the fibers are there? It's bad for your lawn. That's not healthy. That, that can cause issues. Um, that is a surefire way that it's time to sharpen your blades. No questions asked. And if you want to know the difference, take a butter knife and a blade of grass and hold the blade of grass up and then swipe the blade of grass under your fingers with the butter knife and see the quality of the cut and then do the same thing with a razor blade or a sharp steak knife and see the quality of the cut. Butter knife is going to tear the grass and the razor blade is going to slice the grass. And the difference is in appearance is you end up with white tips. You end up with these white tips. When you have these white tips you take a green lawn and you turn it to a yellowy cut. But if you can cut through it nice and clean, then you take a green lawn and you keep it nice and green. So that's just a little something to look at. Um, you know, so if you're like an hourly sharpener and you're like, well, I'm going to sharpen my blades every 10 hours, you know, around hour eight, take a look at the quality of cut. If you're still cutting nice, you're probably good. Um, you know, you get to 12 hours in, you're probably good. Now you go do a crazy field and it might dull your blades out in one hour. And then you go to a customer's yard and you're tearing the grass. So, you know, doing it by the cut, the amount of cut, or doing it by the amount of hours or um, anything like that can be deceiving. Look at the blade, look at the quality of the cut. And are you slicing the grass or are you tearing the grass? Are you leaving the grass white on the top, like fraying it? Or are you cutting it nice and sharp? It'll help the performance of your machine and it's healthier for the lawn and the customer's grass will be green when you're done cutting instead of like a tinge of yellow or beige. Uh, so that's just something to think about. All right, let's move on.
absolutely love the Troy Built TB360. Still to this day, it's about a year old. Badass mower, $369 Lowe's. Go get one. I'm telling you right now, they didn't pay me to say that. They don't pay me to say that. It's just an awesome machine. Awesome machine. Troy Built TB360. Gotta get one. Gotta get one. $369 is freaking disposable for $369, but the thing for a year has been kicking ass and it's earned its weight in gold. It's badass. Hey guys, uh, so I want to talk to you guys about something kind of serious. Uh, it happened today and um, so I have a customer and they're a group of three and uh, this customer is on the end and I'm wearing my sunglasses because of the redness of my eye is just... Look at that. I mean, that is disgusting. And so I don't want you guys losing focus on the message. Um, and I'm not upset. I'm just, my allergies, I just shaved and um, water and everything with my face. And so I'm like all kind of congested right now, but I'll clear up here shortly. Um, so, but what just happened um, in a group of three, and it's three close-knit uh, neighbors. Uh, one of them was very, very sick. He had blood cancer and he went through chemo many years ago. Well, I don't want to say many, maybe a year and a half ago. And he pulled through and, and he was, he seemed to be either in remission or was about to be in remission. And he was going to go to, um, either Augusta or Atlanta and was going to do a blood transfusion. Um, there is no cure for blood cancer. There's only treatments and, uh, the average life expectancy is three years. Um, the longest life um, that's been so far recorded with blood cancer that I've been told is five years. Um, so uh, he, the gentleman passed away Saturday, uh, unbeknownst to me. I did not know this. Um, every time I go there, he seemed to be getting a little bit weaker and weaker. He was back in chemo. It did come back very strong with a vengeance. Um, and I mean, this man might be in his late 40s maybe his 50s maybe um i mean he's got maybe a 20 year old son probably has a I, I don't know how old his daughter is um she's probably 22 maybe that's what they look like young beautiful wife um so he passed saturday and i didn't know that so i go down to you know i, I head down there and there's a few cars in the driveway no big deal and i send my guy down from a house that we were mowing and i say hey run on down knock on their door and give them an opportunity if they would like to move their cars, let them move their cars and let the other guy on the other end of the three, it's a colder sack. So it's, it's one, a middle and one. So let this one know if they'd like to move their cars, go ahead. There's no cars in the middle. And then go to that guy who I know likes to move his car and just ask him, Hey, uh, we're here. If you'd like to move your car and then go ahead and start edging. So he runs down there. He does the edging. I, Come a few minutes later, he's just finishing up edging, and I had just finished the um, mowing with the TB360 that you just got through watching. I just blew off that yard, and now I caught up to him. Uh, so the neighbor is outside talking. This neighbor is outside talking in front of this neighbor's house. This neighbor is the one who passed away. So this neighbor comes up to this guy and says, Hey, this neighbor passed away Saturday, the 2nd. And the funeral is tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. You know, uh, what do you do? Um, do you leave? Do you respect their privacy? Um, do you knock on the door and give your condolences? Do you collect a check? Uh, they always pay right away. You knock on the door, they give you a check. Um, so... I did my three yards there. I, I, I continued on. I did the three yards because I figured, you know what? They're going to have the funeral tomorrow. The yard looks like it's a mess. Let's at least make the yard look nice. Let's, let's get that out of the way for them. Probably the least of their concerns, but they knew it was coming. There's normally, a, like the last time that they thought he was going to pass away, they gave a 30-day window. The doctors did, and then he survived it. Uh, this time... He went to the hospital. They were expecting a 30-day window, and he was dead within a few days. Uh, it took him fast. Uh, but they knew it was coming. So it's not like a major shock. Of course it is, and I don't mean to discount it or lessen it. 
but I mean, it's, I, I imagine it can only be different when you know it's coming and you're prepared for it than like an immediate death, like in a car accident and all of a sudden your world is flipped upside down and you had nothing ready. So knowing them and knowing him with his military service, he was a Marine, everything, uh, all the T's were crossed and all the I's were dotted before his passing. Um, and I thought about that while I was mowing and I was like, I know I'm doing the right thing um, because I know that this is something that needs to be done. It's another stress in their mind that, oh my God, even the yard needs to be mowed. Even the cars need to be serviced. Even, you know, the bills need to be paid. The Everything needs to be done. Um, as sick as the gentleman was, you know, the wife and kids and everybody was taking care of everything and I was taking care of the yard. Um, so, I mean... But the way I handled it at the end, um, I knocked on this neighbor's door and he paid me. The neighbor in the middle gets um, invoice through email and I knocked on this neighbor's door. And uh, the daughter came to the door. And like I said, she's probably in her mid-20s. And I was like, hey, listen, man, I'm really, really sorry about your loss. Um, you know, my condolences to the family. And I'd like to donate this cut to you guys and just, you know, let you guys have the yard service so anybody that comes over after the funeral you don't have to worry about it and uh you know there's not going to be a charge today um and you know she just kind of looked at me kind of expecting it you know kind of like no no you know like i was expecting a no 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 it's okay but it was you know what does she do in that situation you know um so she it's you know at this point in their lives everybody's doing everything they can to help them so it was like she kind of expected me to say, you know, I'm really sorry for your loss. Don't worry about me today. Don't worry about this cut, you know. Um, and it made me feel good like that was the right thing to do. So that's how I handled it. And so going forward, you know, maybe for you guys, if you just don't know what to do, maybe you have an elderly couple and the husband dies or the wife dies and you just don't know how do you handle that? You don't want to be a thorn in their ass knocking on their door. Do you want your yard cut or coming and collecting? Maybe you could just think about what Dan did and all I did. Look, I just I serviced their yard. I gave them something to, you know, at least as relatives and people come into town for the funeral. It's one less thing that they need to worry about. Didn't cost me crap to do, really. Uh, I mean, seriously, it, it's not even a financial thing. Um, and hopefully it, it means something to them and down the road as their pain eases, you know, they'll remember that I was the guy that didn't charge them. You know, the electric company wants their money. The cable company wants their money. The water company wants their money. The trash company wants their money. Those are the places that are going to say, Hey, you know what? Screw you. Uh, you know, you didn't pay your light bill. I don't care if you had a death in the family. You didn't pay your light bill and they turn it off. You know, but they, they'll remember the, the hometown guy, the neighborhood business, you know, that says, hey, I'm really sorry for your loss. This is between you and me. You know, this one's on me. Don't worry about it. I'll see you in a couple of weeks, you know, and you just turn around and you walk away. Uh, so that's how I handled it. I think it was the right way to do it. Um I didn't want to just mow and leave and leave them wondering when is the bill coming. I wanted to knock, give them my condolences, let them know that there was not going to be a bill coming, and leave. And so that's what I did. That's how I handled it. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe you guys can think about that, and if it happens to you, then you could say, well, I'll do the same thing Dan did. I'll service the yard, I'll let them know it was for free, and I'll see them in a couple of weeks, business as usual. So... All right, guys, so um, that happened, and that sucked. I don't like death. I don't do death very well. Um, but all right, so that's going to close out this vlog. Uh, so we talked about the blades of grass and knowing when to uh, sharpen. We talked about, uh, well, we did some TB360 running around, topless in a customer's yard. It's okay. Privacy fence. Nobody's home. Like I said, a time and a place, a time and a place. I mean, there's times when you don't want to be topless. There's times when you do. 
you know, when you can. So a time and a place. But yeah, we worked on our tan a little bit, but that's not the point. The TB360, oh, that machine is just badass. I love it. I do. I really, really do. And, uh, and of course, we, we closed the vlog out with, on a serious note with handling a, a customer's death in the family. So um, thank you guys very much. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital donations is up to $125 now. And that is fantastic. I appreciate you guys very, very much for that. I got some really good heartfelt comments and messages from you guys. Um, so that's really cool. Thank you so much. Uh, keep it up. If, if you want to donate, the link is down below. You can donate anonymously um, or you can do it in your name or you can make up a name. However you want to do it, you can do it. Um, or you can share, share this video. Share that link on your Facebook if you'd like. Do whatever you can to get that link uh, out there. And um, I guess St. Jude sets up a, um, or to, to whoever's handling St. Jude's donations, sets up a goal so they have a goal for me to try to reach a thousand dollars uh in donations by the marathon day november 5th we're at 12 percent already so hey that's not bad in less than a week we're at 12 percent um so that'd be awesome if we can get a little bit more um i really appreciate it but hey um you know you do what you can and or if you can't do anything maybe just share the link and give somebody else an opportunity to do what they can and if that's your part that's your part that's an awesome part um i will be donating myself probably this weekend saturday will be a long run um going to be looking for eight to nine miles this saturday hopefully nine miles i will not have my kids this weekend so i should be able to get a nine mile run in and that will leave a 4.2 mile to do Monday, so that will be my mini marathon between Saturday and Monday, um, or my half marathon, I mean. Um, it kills me to not be running tomorrow. I look forward to running, um, but today and tomorrow I'm off to rest before the long run Saturday. So I'll see you guys soon. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you so much. One more look at the eye. It's pretty gross. Does it show good? It's gross. I think it's a busted blood vessel. I haven't, I don't know, I haven't. I haven't checked on it. Well, I guess since now we can take these off and just be normal. So I'll see you guys really soon. Man. I, I really do appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Have a great night. And I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's a big day. It's a big push. Um, and then we go into a great weekend. So I'll see you guys real soon.